Did you ever have the feeling that you oughta go? Did you ever have the feeling that you oughta stay? Well, I know a man who's gonna have the last say. Who else? But the weatherman. And here's the latest weather report. Hurricane Hazel, nicknamed Hell Hath No Fury, merely winks at Florida, then rips into Calabash, North Carolina, dealing a devastating blow to residents who are being urged to evacuate as soon as... I don't care! You can't stop me! I am going to work! Goddamn bitch, young Greek. You're not working, not while you live in this house. I'm out! You're out, are you? <laughs> we'll see about that. Don't you take another step towards me! You damn wildcat! Not fit to be my wife or mother! Nobody, nobody is going to tell Roxy O'Neill how to act. You knew me when you married me. Don't ask me to stay at home forever. Work is inspiring. Your family's gin-infested gossip fest are not. Yes, I'm a mother, but I'm also an active human being. The better for my kids. They see me and they learn. No, ma'am. I've got to, got to do something. I'm expected to stay home and, and what? Swallow my, my pride, my personality, my future. Drinking, fighting, threats. You know, I'll just fade away. I am a world changer. <laughs> While the cameramen are setting up, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to interview you today. Well, I haven't seen you before. What's your name? I'm Veronica Garrett. I do news at noon. Okay. That's probably why you haven't seen me. Unless you watch TV at that time. But you're probably too busy for that. <laughs> and I'm new. Okay, I'm going to introduce you and then we'll start the interview, all right? Okay. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Veronica Garrett here in Miami with Roxy O'Neill Bolton in her Coral Gables home. Mrs. Bolton moved to Florida from Mississippi right after high school and has been stirring up trouble ever since. But for women concerned with their rights, it's a welcome kind of trouble. Co-founder of the Florida chapter of the National Organization for Women. Known to friends and foes alike as now. Bolton conducts almost all her activities right here at home. In between tending to my family's needs. <laughs> Mrs. Bolton, you've actively fought for women's rights for about 10 years now. I'd like to know, who's your inspiration? Well, through all the hard times raising Randall on my own, far from family, I heard the words of Eleanor Roosevelt. Young people must not lean on their tradition. They must be proud of it while taking into account the advice of the elders and having the courage to look ahead toward new solutions. That's what I'm doing. What are you at the NOW organization hoping to achieve? Well, our first goal is to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed. It, among other things, would allow women to be paid the same rate as men for the same work. Now, wouldn't that be something? Well, I agree, Mrs. Bolton. It'd also be nice if they were allowed to do the same work. How true. <laughs> Another of our goals is to ensure that all women, no matter what they do, are free to access a path of their own choosing and create new opportunities without being punished socially for it. How is it working as, as a reporter, Ms. Garrett? Well, I, I do like my job. Some people say that women in the NOW group hate men. <laughs> Any truth in that? Well, that's ridiculous. Um, my first marriage ended, but David Bolton, my current husband, supports everything I do. We both support the family. 
we don't hate men. We just want to be listened to. It's high time women have the same opportunities. Some people say that women don't have, have do the know how to do certain types of well, jobs. That's all in the education and training. Don't get me started on the obvious. They're a boys club. Harvard has been open to women for a good piece, but Yale finally in 1969 is getting co-ed classes. Where go, did you go to school? If you don't mind my asking. Florida State is my alma mater. Ah, oh, well, you can be proud of that. FSU has had co-ed classes since 1947. Is that right? You're well informed, Mrs. Bolton. It's also had racially mixed enrollment since 1963. I've heard that you're lobbying to stop employers from firing pregnant women. Can you talk about that? Take airline stewardesses, for example. Bump from their jobs the minute they show. Compare that to the hostess image, right? Tight little uniform, bright red lipstick, high heels, perennially single, even when married. Mothers, forget about it. And yet I suppose being a stewardess is one of the few ways women can travel independently. Well, I hope it's worth the humiliation of being fired just because you want both a job and a family. And there she is, Miami's champion for women's rights, Mrs. Roxy O'Neill Bolton. Thank you, Mrs. Bolton. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm Veronica Garrett, signing off. Now, we'll have to have us some coffee because I want to talk. But first, I want to see what's going on with this cane brewing offshore. Edith's wrathful storm surge strikes a death-dealing blow in Nicaragua, then swipes into South Texas, damaging homes, injuring people, and continuing to... Now, what in the name of why are these hurricanes always named after women? In general, men are far more violent. Now, I really do want to hear about your work situation. Let's talk. My work situation is fine. I'm doing what I want to do. You wanted to do this interview? I was given the assignment. Because the men wouldn't touch it, right? Well, they feel a little threatened. Of course. They're afraid I'll pull their pants down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's just you and me now, so. Well, it is a bit annoying when they ask me to make coffee. And do you? No. I usually just wait somewhere until starting time. Oh, well, that can't be comfortable. Beats being mistaken for their mom slash maid. But I'm really okay. If you say so. Excuse me. Hello, Mrs. Roxy O'Neill Bolton. He, he did what? Oh, Claudia, did you have to get to the police? The officer said, what? But did you tell him he was separated? I see. Well, what about the doctor? How could you exaggerate something like that? Doesn't matter if you are married to... He forced himself on you. Claudia, there must be something we can... Of course you can. No, no. David won't mind. Come right over. Okay. Come over. <laughs> Sorry, a friend of mine. <laughs> I couldn't help but hear. I've heard of cases where the husbands track the wives down. Does he know where you live? You got a good point. I just can't think of any place that would be completely safe. That's it. I'm calling the mayor. I, I just have to do something. Go right ahead. Yes, I'd like to speak to the mayor, please. This is Roxy O'Neill Bolton. The hurricane meeting. Will you tell him this is an emergency? Thank you. Oh, hello, my 
Maria Foray. How's Maria? Great. Give her my love. What's the emergency? Well, Mr. Mayor, would you allow any man, even your father, to violate your mother? No, I'm not being facetious. I'm being blunt. Most rapes in this state go unreported. Women are made to feel ashamed. They are not the attackers. What I want is for you to get me in contact with the Jackson Memorial board member. All three. <laughs> Let the board members know you're in favor of treatment for abuse. Because you are, right? I'll remind you soon. Okay, to avoid that, just get me those board members. What for? I'm going to start some kind of safe place for women. Yes, at the hospital. Well, that's great. See what you can do, Mr. Mayor. Bye now. Mrs. Bolton, call me Roxy. Roxy, I'm going to report on this. And on the evening news, it's not instant. <laughs> We're marching against rape tomorrow on Flagler Street. Are you in, Miss Garrett? Call me Veronica. I'm going to ask if I can cover it. Evening News, March 21st, 1974. Today, thanks to Roxy Bolton, a local feminist, a rape crisis center was opened at Jackson Memorial Hospital, the first of its kind in the nation. This historical- event Sorry to interrupt, Veronica. We have breaking weather news. <clears throat> so Donna slashes viciously up from the, from the Caribbean into Florida, flirting with the East Coast, tearing into a number of the islands that surround the East Coast. A number of these islands continue to be affected by this- Now, wait a minute. Uh, uh, residents who have not evacuated are being urged to stay indoors away from Donna's destructive path. Stop! I'm talking to you. Uh, uh, on the West, Donna swerves viciously. All what? The name of that hurricane? What's your problem, lady? The name's Roxy. I just wanted to get your attention. Stop naming hurricanes after women. I know. What about naming him Don or the Hemicane? What? That was a joke. Here's a better idea. You've got to name him after politicians. Like... Hurricane Goldwater slams over Tennessee, wreaks havoc through the South. Come on, lady, that's unfair to Mr. Goldwater. I see, but it's okay to make women seem angry and violent and dangerously sexy at the same time? What's wrong with that? Hurricanes are just scary if they're named after women, that's all. That makes no sense. What's the hold up? This lady's bothering me. The name's Roxy. What's your problem with the way we name hurricanes? What's a hurricane like, Mr. Weatherman? Bob, it's a violent, raging tunnel of wind. That ah, and only women are like that? Do you feel like that, Veronica? Only around Weatherman Bob here. Are you on the rag, Veronica? You are sickening. You know, I'm pregnant, right? <laughs> well, there goes your career down the drain. <laughs> no, more like the completion of my life. I'll come back better and stronger. If they let you back. Do you have kids, Bob? Sure, two of them. Did they ruin your career? No, but I'm a man. I don't have to bear children. So... What do you have to do? Support them or not? Now, wait a minute, lady. I support my wife and my kids. They support you. 
my wife and my kids support me? <laughs> I don't think so. Who I in that shirt you're wearing? Who packs your lunches? You put little notes in your lunchbox? Ugh, gross. Now, wait a minute. I love my lunchbox notes. Oh, before or after you make fun of them with the boys and throw them in the trash? Yeah, I see how you support your wife. Can't be a wimp. Heaven forbid you should show some feeling. My first husband was like you. Never could be vulnerable. Those bottled up feelings just made him violent. Like the hurricanes you're describing. Come on, what do you ladies want? We want to be treated with respect and decency. We deeply resent being associated with disaster. Women create life. Veronica's creating life in her body right now. Hurricanes wipe out lives. So not us. Given the fact that we are 50% of the population, why are we 100% of the hurricane? And 100% unnoticed. I noticed your legs, Veronica. No, gross. Disgusting. Well, it's a compliment. Okay, I noticed you have a face by staring at it. I don't make comments about your physical attributes. When's the last time someone said something about your body? My wife, last night. <laughs> Is Veronica your wife? Uh, no. Then maybe don't comment on my body or my bodily functions, Bob. Yeah, you never minded before. What changed, Veronica? I've always minded. When you and your group of boys stare me down, make your dumb comments, I just keep walking. What? would happen if I stirred the waters? Would I get more assignments? No. I can't even wear slacks. I'm required to wear dresses just so you can oval my legs. Well, I'm done. Now I see if I don't make waves like a hurricane, nothing will ever happen. I'll still have to put up with your crap. Well, I'm done. Well, I, I never knew you felt that way. Just help us change this one thing. No more acting like crazy storms are women. I gotta go back to my report, but I'll think about it. You do that, Bob. Yes, ma'am. Meanwhile, an overwater passage rips into the Jersey Shore, wreaking havoc on each of the northeastern states that continue to see the effects of this terrible. It's been such a pleasure to have you on, Mrs. Bolton. It's been a couple of years since we last spoke. That's right. It was 1977. <laughs> One last question. You tend to rile up a lot of people. Do you do that on purpose? Uh, people always ask why I'm not in politics. It's simple. I have no tolerance for playing games. I tell it like it is. I couldn't do that if I ran for office. I'm not trying to upset people, but the truth is disturbing. On the other hand, a lot of people fight back, partly because of your public actions. Thank you, Mrs. Bolton. And that's it for Women in the News. I'm Veronica Garrett, signing off. It must feel good to be in a pantsuit. Oh, it's pretty cool to be able to cover up the legs. <laughs> now, on for equal pay. Well, you let me know if I can help, all right? You're my inspiration, Roxy. Oh. Thank you. Um, by the way, I think you might want to turn on the TV. Something you might want to see. <laughs> Hello.
Well, folks, uh, this is historical. The storm brewing in the Atlantic Ocean goes by the name of Bob. That should make some feminist folk very happy. Yes, we're naming hurricanes after both men and women now, um, starting now. And we have our own local Roxy O'Neill Bolton to thank for that. Thank you. 